If you are looking for a peaceful autumn hike in Rocky Mountain National Park, then the East Shore Trail may be what you're looking for. It's off the beaten path and yet a place of great beauty. It follows the shore of Shadow Mountain Lake, winding through forest, marshland, and open meadows. I actually think it's a great hike all year round, but my favorite time to do it is definitely the autumn. If this sounds like a hike for you, I hope you'll join me. Welcome to the west side of Rocky Mountain National Park. Today we're going to hike the East Shore Trail. It begins just south of the inlet that divides Grand Lake from Shadow Mountain Lake. It's one of the few hikes that begins outside the National Park. The East Shore Trail begins in Arapaho National Recreation Area. Before we hit the trail, let me give you an overview. It is a 6.5 mile round trip hike with 512 feet of elevation gain. And what that means is that it is relatively flat, apart from two small hills that you'll encounter right at the beginning and then as you return at the end of your hike. For most people who don't do a lot of hiking, you can expect it to take you just under four and a half hours. I hike a little bit faster and so I'm expecting it to take me just over two hours. Now that's not including any breaks, so you can judge your own time based on these factors. This is what we call a lollipop hike. We're going to hike down the edge of Shadow Mountain Lake and then we're going to turn left onto the Ranger Meadows Trail and follow that on down, eventually turning right, heading towards Shadow Mountain Dam. And then finally, we're going to take another right turn and then follow the edge of the lake back up to where we started. You can see from the map that it isn't a loop trail or a straight out and back trail, but is in the shape of an upside down lollipop, hence the name. Now here are a couple of things that make this trail different than most others in Rocky Mountain National Park. Firstly, this is the National Park's only multi-use trail, so be aware that you may encounter bicycles on your hike. Secondly, this trail is a small part of the 2,800 mile Continental Divide Trail. A majority of hikers begin at the Mexico border in mid-June and try to make it all the way to the Canadian border before the snow flies. In July and August, you'll probably encounter some of these hikers on the trail. If you can, have a chat with them. Many of them have great stories to tell about the adventures they've had getting here. Well, we've got a lot to see today, so let's get started. So at 0.7 miles, we enter into Rocky Mountain National Park and leave the Arapaho National Recreation Area. At 1.5 miles, we reach this junction. Here, if you have energy, a lot of energy, you can hike up Shadow Mountain. Now near the top is a historic fire lookout where people used to keep watch for wildfires. Currently, it's in a state of disrepair, but they have plans to uh, renovate it over the next couple of years. Getting up there is well worth the effort, but it is a lot of effort. It's a fairly strenuous hike, and from this point, it's an additional 6.6 .6 miles round trip with about 1,500 feet of elevation gain. Now, that's more than I told you we would do today, so let's save that for another day. From this point, we'll continue onward just a 
about 100 feet down the trail, and then we're gonna turn left and follow what is known as the Ranger Meadows Trail. It's a beautiful trail with marsh and open grassland where you may well see wildlife. But be aware that in the spring and early summer that this stretch is often too muddy to pass, so it's best to do it in late summer or autumn. enjoying this hike today. It's just so peaceful out here. This is a very different area than most of Rocky Mountain National Park and what you may typically experience. We don't have the really grand vistas on this trail except from near the lake you can see some gorgeous mountains but it's so quiet and uh, refreshing especially on this mid-September day when the grass is golden and the aspen are turning color it's just so peaceful. Well, right now we're traveling through an area that's a mixture of forest and marshland. And so in terrain like this, uh, you very well may come across moose or even elk. And uh, so keep your eyes open and keep your distance. Now, most of these animals will move away when they see you or hear you coming. So don't be too worried, just uh, be aware. <laughs> Now when you reach this intersection, you're gonna to wanna to take a turn to the right and head up this way. In a very short while, you're gonna get views of Shadow Mountain Dam. That's gonna be our next stop. We'll talk to you there. So we've arrived at the Shadow Mountain Dam at the south end of the lake. Shadow Mountain Lake is actually a reservoir created in 1946 when they built this 63-foot earthen dam at what is now its southern end. 
You may find it surprising that Shadow Mountain Lake receives water from Lake Granby, which is 82 feet lower than Shadow Mountain Lake. Water is actually pumped up from the Lake Granby Reservoir and into Shadow Mountain Lake. Now you might wonder why they do this. Well, Shadow Mountain Lake flows into Grand Lake and the water from Grand Lake, believe it or not, flows to Estes Park. Now in order for this to happen, they need to maintain the water levels. In 1937, the Colorado Big Thompson Project was formed to divert water from the western side of the mountains to the eastern side. This involved creating a tunnel under the mountains and under the national park in order to transfer water from Grand Lake to Colorado's Front Range. Well, I hope you enjoyed this hike. I sure did. It sure is a great one to get away from the crowds and enjoy a different aspect of Rocky Mountain National Park. If you want the full details on this hike, as well as 74 other hikes in Rocky, you can find them in my book, Hiking Rocky Mountain National Park, The Essential Guide. Well, if you enjoyed this content, please consider subscribing. I'm always putting out new content on Rocky Mountain National Park. I'd also love it if you left a comment below. I'd love to hear from you, know what you think, and hear if you have any ideas for how I can make these videos better. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again later. If you would like to learn more about Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com. For my books and calendar, visit rockytrailpress.com. And if you're visiting Estes Park, Colorado, be sure and stop in my gallery, Images of RMNP.